Leah. I'm Sean. I'm Ron. And, and we're, we're going to talk to you about, about why you should let, let us borrow, borrow the car. car. From the very beginning, we've learned all about reaction time. What it is, how it plays into driving, and what affects the reaction time. Reaction time refers to the time it takes for you to react, plus the time it takes for you to complete the action. You see something, you think, your brain sends a signal to your muscles to move, and you move. Now that we know our own personal reaction times and based on the experiments, we now use this knowledge to consider while we drive. So some factors that affect our reaction time are conversation in the car, multitasking, changing a CD or the radio, talking and texting on the phone, eating and drinking or sneezing, uh, how tired you are, what medications you take, drugs or alcohol, your age and your personality. If you have a more high-strung personality, then your reaction time is generally better. Width of the intersection, time of the yellow light, reaction time of the driver, and conditions of the brakes. Considering these factors, we can determine that a go zone and the stop zone, which allow us to decide whether or not we can proceed or stop, without breaking the law, of course. Recently, we learned about centripetal force and acceleration, which also includes Newton's laws of motion. His first law states that a moving object will move in a straight line forever at a constant speed. Okay. If we're driving on an icy road and we encounter a patch of ice while turning, we know based off of what we learned about centripetal acceleration that the car will go straight, tangent to the circle, um, when it loses friction. Friction provides the centripetal, centripetal force which allows the car to follow the circle or turn while we drive. So now we know what to consider while driving to make sure that we are safe, smart, and classy. Thanks to what we learned in physics.